Hey guys, Wells Knight here, bringing you a brand new series. Welcome to my Total War Attila campaign basic series. This is a series that I have been wanting to do for quite a while. Uh, this is a game and franchise that I have truly loved over the years. Total War Attila is the newest installment in the Total War franchise, which I have been playing since basically as long as I can remember. This series is basically going to serve as a tutorial series that will teach you basically everything that you need to know about the game. This first episode is going to be geared towards players who are entirely new to Total War and have not played any of the previous games. However, later episodes in the series will deal with changes and things like that that are for the people who have some experience with Total War. So, first and foremost, this is the main menu. When you first come into the game, this is what you see. And you've got campaigns over here, battles, options, the encyclopedia, which serves as kind of an in-game guide or manual. You've got purchase additional DLC, which I have not done yet, but I probably will. And then you've got your home screen and exit game. Up here you've got chat and then you'll see right here you have an option to start the prologue. The prologue is going to serve basically as your tutorial for the game. We're gonna skip that and I'll go into a little bit more detail on these options. Now there's three campaigns, a prologue, a grand campaign, and the multiplayer campaign. The grand campaign is basically the meat and potatoes of Total War Attila. You pick a faction and you fight for control of the known world. This is where most of their time is probably going to be spent. However, you also have the option for a multiplayer campaign, which is the same thing, but with a friend online, or it does, I suppose it doesn't necessarily have to be a friend, but someone online, and you can either play cooperatively or against each other. Either way, you'll still have computer-controlled characters and whatnot. The prologue, as I said, is the tutorial. Next, we have battles. You've got historical battles, which are basically um, recreations of historical battles, scenarios, if you will. They're scenarios, and you fight and try and win them. You will also have custom battles, where you basically can play a computer or someone uh, online, whatever. You pick the units and things that you want, the map, and you wage the battle. So this is a great option for testing out units that you might be unfamiliar with, kind of getting to know the strengths and weaknesses of all the various factions. You can customize their equipment. We'll, we'll have a more in-depth tutorial on this later. Um, next, multiplayer battles is the same thing as custom battles, but multiplayer. Quick battle is basically just going to be find a match. Just get dropped in and good to go. And then you've got your leaderboards. Under your options, this is where you're going to have your graphics, your controls, your settings, stuff like that. There are a couple important ones under game settings. You've got your advice level and battle advice. You'll have like a little pop-up advisor who will give you tips and stuff. I can probably turn this to low or off. You'll also have your scales and then you'll have some other options like projectile trails, uh, help markers, things like that. Under graphics is where you are going to find unit size right here. You can set it to small, medium, large, or ultra, and the number of units or the number of soldiers in each unit will increase or decrease. I usually have it set to large, which I believe off the top of my head puts 160 soldiers in each unit, but don't quote me on that exact amount. Uh, this will affect your graphics performance of course but it also kind of makes the game a little bit more epic if you have larger unit sizes under the encyclopedia we'll take a quick look at that as i said it is an in-game it's it's basically a manual and it will tell you all the tech and the units and the characters and all that kind of stuff so you can browse through it here right in the game which is kind of nice and then we won't get into dlc and all that kind of stuff so let's go ahead and get a grand campaign fired up and 
You're going to have several different tribes. I will have a more in-depth tutorial on each of these factions, explaining their strengths and weaknesses later on in this series when I've become a little bit more familiar with the game. I just got it earlier, but I am a Total War veteran, as I said. So we'll just pick the first one. It doesn't matter. But what I want to show you here is basically what we are going to do on turn one. I'll be back right after this screen is done loading. Alright guys, I am back. When you first load into the game, you will get a little opening cutscene. I'm not going to spoil that for you by playing it. But you will see a mission issued and a little uh, window like this that will basically say what you need to do and what you'll actually get for completing that mission. Down here in the lower right hand corner, you will see a mini-map that will show you the entire known world. You can also... Uh, is it this one? Yes. You can also click on that to pull up this map and look at an enlarged version of it, which you can scroll around, drag, and whatnot. The same thing can be done with the tab key. Here, you will have your faction overview, which will tell you... Go away, advisor. And that will tell you basically your family tree, politics, records, summary, stats, all this kind of stuff you will find right in here. Over here we'll have objectives which show you not only the mission that you were just given, but if you go all the way down, it will show you some of these other ones too that you'll have later on. And then here will be your victory objectives, which is what you need to accomplish to actually win the game in its entirety. Next to that you will have trade and finances. This is going to be very important. It's where you set your tax level. Uh, it's where you can take a look and see how much money you have coming in, how much you're spending on things, etc, etc. You'll have an overview of your trade right over here, and you'll have a summary of all of your income in general right there. Next is technology. This will be where you research various technologies. Once again, we will have a more in-depth tutorial on that later. And then little check mark to close it and then finally you'll have diplomacy right here and this is going to be where you can create trade agreements build alliances declare war all that kind of stuff now total war if you are unfamiliar this is basically a game it's a 4x game that merges kind of the world management and uh building of civilization or games similar to that with real-time combat and that is why I love it so much there's not really another game quite like it and that does it so well and I've been a fan of this franchise for a long time but this is the strategic overview the world overview if you will you can see we've got fog of war covering up a lot of these nearby locations if we go to our strategic map you can see that this that we have in yellow here is our controlled region the green are people who have a positive attitude towards me and red is people who don't like me very much there's a bunch of map controls up here as well but to move around you can use WASD you can bring your mouse to the sides of the map and do it that way too. I have a second monitor over there to keep me from going right, but that's okay, WASD. You can just click on a unit to highlight it and then left click to move it. Same with cities, just click on them and that will bring this up. And you can do all your building and stuff here. And basically what you'll wanna do on your first turn is you'll want to set up your buildings and your armies the way that you you want to get that going as quickly as possible so you can see we have 5,000 gold in our treasury we've got some income coming in we don't have a whole lot of spare food the food that we are creating is being used right away it is spring 395 AD and these are some of the bonuses and overviews as well so the first thing that I like to do on any new turn is I want to look at the buildings that I've got. So I have a artisan which produces 300 wealth from industry and unlocks the recruitment of a unit German band. We've got trade jetties so we can go ahead and right away we can start looking for trade agreements. Let's see. 
These guys like us, but they're not trading with us. I don't think they actually can trade with us, though. Yeah, we actually don't have the ability to trade with them because we don't have a route to them. The Geats, maybe we, maybe they'll like to trade with us. What you want to do on the first turn is you want to try... No, I don't want a non-aggression pact. You want to try and open up as many trade agreements as possible on the first turn because that'll boost your income. So there we've got one. And here we've got one as well that we might be able to get away with. No, they just want an non-aggression pact, which I'm not interested in. But we did get one trade agreement out of that, which is good. So that's going to boost our income a little bit. You can see it's a tiny bit higher than it was before. Now, this is our city overview. And the way that this works is we have three cities or towns in each province. So we've got Flevum right here, which we own. Tulafurdum, which is over here and we do not own and Angelus, which is over here and we do not own either. Once I control all three of these, I will get a bonus, a faction or a, uh, a territorial bonus for holding all three, and I'll be ma able to manage things in all three. We'll get into more on that later. But once again, returning to what we like to do on the first turn, we have some undeveloped land here, so we want to build that up, and food is going to be very important. We're going to want to increase our food intake, We've also got wells for sanitation, sacred ground for public order, that's going to be important, and then a chieftain's house. I think at this point, food is probably the most pressing concern early in the game, because if you have a food surplus, your town will grow, its population will grow faster, so we're going to need that. So we'll do the town. We'll go to our armor, or our, uh, our army right here, and we should be able to recruit new units by clicking on this recru uh, Recruit Units button. Let's go ahead and... Let's see, let's take a couple Germanic bands. And you can see here, it will take one turn to train these. This one has the two, that means it would be an additional turn before this one gets trained. So we'll just train four units right there, start building up the army a little bit. And then we can take our ship over here, our navy, and we can start exploring some of this area that we haven't taken a look at yet. So that's all something that you'll probably want to do on your first turn. We'll just bring it down here. If you want the unit to move a little faster, you can hit spacebar, and that will increase their travel speed um, on the overworld map. Not the actual distance that they're able to travel in a turn, but it will increase how fast they actually move as you're watching them. So now we've got our armies recruiting. We have another one down here. Now you'll notice... If we try to recruit here, these guys are going to take more turns, and that's because up on this guy, he's using all of this region's recruiting power. All of this is going directly to him, so we don't have any spare units left over. I like to keep a unit garrison in my cities, so we'll put him in there. That will increase the public order. And then basically from this point on, there's not really a whole lot more you can do on the first turn. We don't really have any armies to spare to start waging war. We're already recruiting units. We've got exploration being done. We might have an agent somewhere. Up here, I almost forgot to mention this, you've got your event messages, a list of all of your armies, you have the provinces, and then here you've got all of the various factions that are in the game as well. So we can just check. It looks like we don't have any sort of agent, like a spy. All of our units have taken an action this turn so at this point all we would have to do is go ahead and end the turn and i hope that provides you a very brief overview of the game as far as turn one the menus some of that kind of stuff we will have a much more detailed tutorial on all of this as this tutorial series continues so if you got something out of this video, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I do appreciate it, and it really helps out my channel. If there is a specific question that you have about the game that you'd like to see addressed in a tutorial video, please leave it in the comments below so I can do that. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. There are links in the video description below, so check, that out, check those out as well. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll definitely see you next time. Then we're going to take our oak stairs back and fill in these chunks just to kind of 
round out the roof a little bit. We're going to knock a spot out right there. And then over here, we're going to do basically the same thing. 